I am pumped. Welcome into this Photoshop tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. Today we're going to talk about four different ways to sharpen your photos and it's something that every digital image needs. You need to sharpen your photos and there's a bunch of different ways you can do it. These are four different ways that I uh, will sharpen different photos kind of just depending on my mood. I love all four ways so much. Um, there are lots of great sort of third-party plugins that do amazing jobs at retouching um, and there are also are ways to selectively retouch parts of images. We're not really going to get into that stuff in this tutorial. I'm just going to show you sort of global sharpening Four different ways to do global sharpening here in Photoshop. I have a camera raw image here. Now, before we jump in and get into this tutorial, I want to let you guys know I'm selling a course over on tutvid.com, my website, all about advanced Photoshop techniques and things like that. It'll just really up your Photoshop game. You got to go check it out. It's a course. It's affordable. You help support Tutvid if you pick one up. Um, I'm not going to sell you and give you a whole spiel. There's a little video card right there on the video. You can click on that, go over to the website, check it out. There's a ton of info over there. And uh, well, let's just get back to the tutorial now. We're going to begin with what's called Unsharp Mask. Now, one of the most important things, especially in newer versions of Photoshop, is before I do any kind of sharpening, I like to convert my image to a smart object. Now, this one is already a smart object because I opened it as a camera raw file. It is a camera raw file. And I opened it in Photoshop as a smart object. So it is a smart object. Therefore, I can apply smart filters to it, which are basically just filters that I can apply and then I can come back to them later and continue to adjust and tweak them. So under sharpen, we're going to begin here with unsharp mask. Now, just a quick uh, note or word of warning. I have not sharpened this image at all. It's, it's straight out of a Canon 5D Mark II. Uh, I shot the image, I don't know, three or four years ago, and it was shot with Canon's 70-200 f2.8L USM version 2 lens. So it's like a 32, it was, I think it was a $3,500 lens when I bought it uh, back in the day. So it's a, a nice lens on a full frame camera. That's what the raw file is from. So it's going to be a fairly sharp file out of the camera anyway. I believe it was also shot on a tripod, uh, but you still need to sharpen a little bit. So here we go. Unsharp mask. First and foremost, we have a preview box. We should probably check that on. Um, and what we can do is this little box that appears out here, when we click on that, it's going to sort of, you know, zoom in on that area or show us that area of the image, I should say, when I click. So there's the eye and we can zoom in a little bit more if we want. Uh, but I kind of like to view the image at 100%. I have it at 400% out here. We can see right down here, we have the image at 400%. All right, so uh, we can boost the amount of sharpening. You can see it's giving us all these crispy, like over crisped details. Her, uh, her lips look like they're almost... I don't know, pencil drawn or something. They don't look right. And just as under sharpening can be really bad to an image, over sharpening, I think personally, is actually worse. So you really don't want to over sharpen. But I want to boost up the percentage or amount of sharpening because a lot of the sharpening techniques have the similar sliders, amount and radius. Radius has to do with how far on either side of the pixels Photoshop is looking to boost the contrast of those adjoining pixels. So you get sharpness by boosting edge contrast and therefore making it look like there are more defined and crisp details in your photo. So if you increase radius a lot, it's going to sort of give us this very uh, high passy looking effect really bad effect. If you really want to focus on very, very fine details, you want to reduce the radius. Reducing the radius also is going to overall make the amount slider a little bit less effective. It's technically not making it less effective, but it just makes it look a little bit less effective because the the, the amount is sort of the, the amount of water coming through the fire hose and radius is like the size of the fire hose, if you will, uh, to use a, a bizarre firefighting analogy. I don't know why how that just came to me or whatever, but you'll definitely see the difference. I like to keep radius typically below one pixel, but this all really depends on the resolution of your image. A very tiny image is going to call for a much, much smaller radius. A larger image, you can probably bump the radius up a little bit, and in fact, you might need to bump the radius up so you actually see some great edge sharpening detail happening. Now, threshold, threshold is basically, I mean, you can see if I boost the threshold, we're just almost softening the image out. I like to just leave the threshold at zero. Honestly, I almost never touch the slider at all when I'm using Unsharp Mask. So in this case, an amount of about, I don't know, 100, 140 with a radius of 0 0.5 looks pretty sharp. We'll hit OK. And you can see, sure enough here, if I, whoop, if I drop down my smart uh, or my smart object and I can see my smart filters, I can shut the filter off. There's no sharpening. And there is with Unsharp Mask. So that's technique number one looks pretty decent. And by the way, you can combine any of these techniques. Let's duplicate this image. Image, duplicate. 
And uh, we're just going to go with 05. You know what? I'm going to call this 05 smart. All right, 05 hyphen smart because we're going to use smart sharpening now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag smart filters to the garbage. And we're going to apply a smart sharpen to uh, this this uh, camera raw image. So we're going to go filter, sharpen. There you go, smart sharpen. By the way, you do have a shake reduction, which isn't really sharpening, but it kind of sort of uh, sharpen, which is like the old, it just applies just as a very generic passive sharpening with no control. Um, and by using that, you can really destroy the integrity of an image very quickly. Uh, I don't really do that anymore. That was kind of my, my olden days of Photoshop when I didn't know what, what in the world I was doing. Smart sharpen, though, is very, very powerful. Uh, sharpen, sharpen, and just sharpen more. Honestly, I, I haven't used them in five years or 10 years, actually. What am I thinking? 10 years. Uh, smart Sharpen. That's what we want to play with now. Smart Sharpen is like Unsharp Mask, but technically, uh, theoretically, smarter and therefore better. Uh, you get a much more rich sharpening. I know that. Uh, there are just times when you, like Unsharp Mask is just like you just can't feel it. You know, it's just the right way that you're going to mask it or sharpen, excuse me, this photo. Uh, so with Smart Sharpen, you have amount, radius, and you also have the ability to reduce noise in here. Reducing noise is interesting. When you're working with sharpening, the more you reduce noise, inherently you soften the image. And you can see when I did that. I don't know if you could see if you got the quality of this video turned up. Her skin got very soft, but so did all of like the details there around her eyebrow. If I don't reduce much noise, um, I, I take the chance of having a lot more grain and a lot more of that bad crunchiness, but I know I'm going to have really sharp details. So with Smart Sharpen, I typically like to reduce noise at between 10 and 20%. It all just depends, though, on the ISO and the grain that is already in my image. Grain is heavily accentuated when you go and sharpen an image. So Smart Sharpen can be very helpful to go in and sharpen up like a nighttime, a nighttime image where maybe you were driving your camera at ISO 3, you know, 3200 or 6400 or 12,800 or you know 52,000 with some of these newer cameras um, where you're really driving your ISO. You want to draw sharpness out of the image, but you also need to reduce noise. That's a really, really helpful slider to have. And again, your amount and your radius. And radius works the same way. You can see I crank up radius and we're getting that same like just nasty, you know, HDR vomity type effect. So I'm just going to pump up my amount. Uh, probably at about 160 radius around one still looks good. You can also reduce lens and Gaussian blur and also motion blur. With motion blur, you sort of need to know the angle of the motion blur, which can be tricky to figure out. Um, Gaussian blur, it's just Gaussian blur. Lens blur is kind of the default. I usually hang out with that. You also do have uh, the option to fade the sharpness in shadows or highlights. Again, this can be very useful if you're looking at something and you you can see that there's a lot of uh, bad sharpening going on up in the highlight the highlight portion of your image or highlights portion of your image. You can adjust the tonal width, um, how much of those highlights are actually being affected, um, and also again fine tune the radius either in your shadows or highlights. So a ton of options here in Smart Sharpen. And oh by the way, there is an older version of Smart Sharpen, and if you like that, well. You probably don't know if you if you're here watching this tutorial, you've probably you probably haven't used the legacy version, but there is an older version of Smart Sharpen if you absolutely hate this uh, newer version of Smart Sharpen. But Smart Sharpen is super powerful. I really like it a lot. It's probably my go-to sharpen uh, when I'm coming in to do like real deal sharpening in Photoshop. Smart Sharpen. I'm gonna hit OK to commit that. Let's duplicate the image again. Image duplicate, and we're gonna name this one Camera Raw. So I'm gonna go 05 hyphen Camera Raw. Now Camera Raw in the Camera Raw editor, there is a sharpening uh, engine built in. So here I'm gonna just drag Smart Filters to the garbage, and what we can do is, you know what? Actually, I'm gonna apply a Smart uh, a, a Camera Raw adjustment to this uh, layer. So I'm going to go filter, camera raw filter, or camera raw filter, I guess, technically. And it's going to open my image in the camera raw uh, dialog box. reason I'm doing this is just because if you're not working with a camera raw image, you can open any image in the camera raw editor by just going camera raw filter under the filter menu. Uh, quick side note, it does have to be a smart object, I believe, in order to use the camera raw filter. So you may need to just convert for smart filters and then you can go camera raw filter. All right. So here in the camera raw filter dialog box, the third tab over is the sharpening tab. I'm going to zoom into 100% by double clicking the uh, the little magnifying glass. And you know what? That's not zoomed in enough. So I'm going to zoom in even more. So just so I can see her face, I want to see the detail on the lips. I want to see the detail in the eyes and the eyelashes. Can I bring out the eyelashes? Can I really bring out the eyebrows? What about the highlights on these, the, the beads and stuff she's wearing around her head? So I'm going to crank up the sharpening here. 
And you can see if I bring it up too much while I'm getting almost every pore of detail, uh, it's too much. So I can do a couple things. I can drop radius a little bit, see if that helps, and it does, but I really just need to drop the amount a bit. So I'm going to knock it down to like 84. Now here's something that's interesting. Uh, 84. I just breezed over that. It's such a random number. Um, you know, it can be whatever. Somewhere in the 80s. That's what I'm trying to say. Detail, this is, before you even get to noise reduction, detail is kind of noise reducing or noise enhancing. If you increase the detail slider, you do get very crisp, sharp edges in a way that Unsharp Mask and Smart Sharpen don't really give you, um, but you also do bring out a lot of noise in the image. Um, a quick side note thing to think about is if you have an insane amount of ISO and grain in your image from that ISO being so high, uh, you can come into sharpening and not only reduce the luminance and color noise, you can also reduce the detail slider and it tends, I've noticed, to take away, uh, to take away noise and grain as well. So I actually want to boost detail just a little bit. Um, I don't want her skin to be too sharp and too crisp uh, because I want her to look soft. I want her to still have a feminine look to her. Um, if this was like some gritty looking, you know, you know MMA fighter or something, um, then maybe we would want to bring out and accentuate every dirty little detail in his face and every wrinkle and rut and, you know, everything that's going to just give him that just, you know, tough grit look. Um, we want her to look a little bit nicer than that. So that's the sharpening here in the camera roll dialogue. Uh, I'm going to hit OK. And we've uh, applied that change. All right, I'm going to do one more. So we're going to do image duplicate. And for this, I'm going to use a high pass layer. So I'm going to call this high pass. All right, what I'm going to do, I'm going to get rid of, oh, hello. I'm going, come on, here we go. Select the arrow if you're able to. And I'm just going to get rid of that smart filter. All right, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to duplicate this layer. Command or Control J to duplicate the layer. Right click on the layer, choose Rasterize Layer. Before applying a high pass filter, I like to desaturate the layer. This is obviously already a black and white, so I'm not going to do it. But if you need to quickly desaturate a layer, image adjustments and desaturate, note the hotkey, Command Shift U, that would be Control Shift U on the PC. We already have a black and white layer. In fact, I'll just name this High Pass. And we're going to go Filter other high pass. Now with high pass we need to take care here and I'm going to zoom in. We don't want this much um, this sort of this broad detail and you can see the only slider we have is radius and you can see as we increase radius we sort of get that same style of effect that we got both in Smart Sharpen, in the Camera Raw uh, editor, and in Unsharp Mask, where we get this very um, mid tony it just really punches up the mid-tones. If I were to take this layer and convert it to, or set it to the blend mode of soft light, I would get this very um, interesting contrast boost to those kind of mid tony areas of my image. I don't want that though. I want detail sharpen, uh, sharpness. So I'm going to reduce the radius down until I ju I'm just getting a nice kick of highlight and shadow. Uh, right there about 0.6 works great for this size image. Again, if you're using a larger image, you might need to do something like 2.5 or 3 or something, something of that nature. In this instance, I'm going to go with 0.6. It looks about right. I'm going to hit OK. And then what you need to do is set this blend mode to either overlay or soft light. Overlay is going to give the sharpness a little bit more sort of bite. Um, soft light is a little bit more subtle. One of the things that I particularly love about high pass sharpening is with the hotkey commander control J, I can duplicate it a few times and really build up my sharpness effect. And then I can sort of start masking layers away. So if I want like her eyes to have a ton of sharpness, I can apply a mask to, you know, these three layers and, you know, paint away, paint with black over like her skin and her, you know, her hair or the jewelry and maybe the clothing and things like that to really knock away a lot of that sharpness that I don't don't want. That's one of the tech, one of the ways you can do very selective um, sharpening. I'm going to delete those layers though, and we're just going to do a simple single overlay high pass filter. All right, let's compare these images. So we're going to go uh, window arrange four up. So what do we know? We've got our high pass sharpening here. We've got our smart sharpening here. And I can see, for instance, smart sharpening is definitely sharper than the high pass uh, sharpening. Here we've got camera raw. Camera raw looks a little bit fragmented. I'm going to be honest with you. Not quite as clean as a smart sharpen. And unsharp mask, the original one, really isn't that bad either. It doesn't quite have like the pop on the edges that smart sharpen has. So I think smart sharpen is the best, at least for this image. And generally, like I said when I used it, when I, when I go in with the express purpose of sharpening, applying that round of sharpening, it's smart sharpen. That's what I'm using to sharpen my image. Um, so 
Those are four different ways that I like to use to sharpen images in Photoshop. You really can't go wrong with any of them, but I would urge you to play around with all four of them, see what you like, and uh, you know, there's things that I use high pass for that I would never use unsharp mask for, um, and the same thing with smart sharpen versus camera raw and, and everything. There's a there's a time and a place for all of this different uh, all these different uh, methods and things like that. So for sharpening images in Photoshop in a ridiculous number of ways, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodds and Tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. Hey, it's me again. Your friendly neighborhood tutorial provider. You've come to the end of this tutorial, but guess what? The goodness doesn't have to stop now because, of course, after you hit the like button for this video, you gotta subscribe to this channel. It's one of the best tutorial channels on the web. I mean, I make the tutorials, so it's pretty good, I think. After that, make sure you go sign up for the Tutvid.com newsletter. You're gonna get a free guide full of time-saving tips and tricks for Photoshop. It's amazing. And then, of course, if you're into the social media thing, you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, or Instagram. I've got all the links right down in the description to this video. Catch you in the next video, guys. I will, right? Because, of course, you'll be subscribed.